Hello and welcome to IndiaPostLive.com, India's first live conversation web television. This is a portal where all of you can join the conversation at any time. Just log on and click to send us your participation request. You can carry on the conversation long after it is over in the studio through your posts, your audio posts, your video comments and of course your tweets at hashtag India Post Live and at the rate India Post Live. So let's get on with the conversation that we are about to begin now, the new topic. India's second largest IT services provider seems to be facing a worst, its worst ever crisis since its conception in 1981. Infosys you all will know, you all will remember, used to be an employer of choice for this young new brand of IT um, experts, the young engineers who came out, all they wanted to do was join Infosys. But it seems to be losing that um, you know, name and top level management people have been quitting the organization at an unprecedented rate. So what is it that is causing this kind of a malaise in the company? We are going to discuss that and I have with me in the studio Pranjal Sharma. Pranjal is consulting editor with Business World and uh, he is the market expert. Pranjal, thank you so much for joining the conversation. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. I also have joining us online in the conversation I have uh, Karthik Shekhar. Karthik Shekhar is uh, General Secretary of uh, Unites, uh, the IT Employees Association. Uh, Karthik uh, Shekhar, uh, thank you so much for joining the conversation. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Hi. Okay, Karthik joins us from Bangalore. I have another uh, person uh, joining us from Bangalore, another online guest. He is Krishna Kumar. Krishna Kumar is an HR consultant and trainer, and he also joins us from Bangalore. Sir, good evening. Welcome to the conversation. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. Great. All right. Uh, first, uh, Pranjal, uh, let me let me ask you. You know this. Uh, I'm from Bangalore myself and I remember my um, batchmates and even subsequent batches, you know, uh, the guys who were doing computer science engineering or even IT or electronics and communications, they used to have stars in their eyes the moment Infosys was mentioned. Infosys has always been this company of choice for the, the new breed of, uh, you know, um, technicians and engineers. What's gone wrong? What it's not happened? just stars that they hide in, had in, in their eyes, in the they also had dollar signs in their eyes because, you know, the kind of money that people made over yes. the years yeah. was fantastic. So, fantastic. so yeah. you know, it's also not about Bangalore. Infosys was the child of Indian reforms. It was a symbol of everything great which was happening Absolutely. when India opened up. Uh, it was it was a fantastic symbol of India's IT capabilities. Uh, even though it was basically coding work, but the fact that it could grow, it could scale up. I think Infosys created uh, a lot of excitement about India just at the right time. Hmm. Nobody thought that you know India, which was seen as a country with only a three percent Hindu rate of growth, would actually come up with become a technology giant and. You know, every country in the world sat up and you know, took notice that India is now a technology giant because of companies like Infosys. It was called to be Bangalore, remember? Absolutely. So <laughs> offshoring, outsourcing, yes. etc., all that happened. And you know why Infosys is important is that it wasn't that before Infosys there weren't any technology companies. I mean, uh, the founders, including Mr. Narayan Murthy, were mm. part of Patni Computer Systems and yes. their founder just passed away. Okay. Tata Consultancy Services had been there for even 20 decades, uh, two decades before that. Hmm. But the fact is that the excitement it had, it listed, it created multi-millionaires out of its own employees. Right. It created millionaires out of the investors. So it was like the Reliance story which played out in the market, except it was not in manufacturing, it was in technology. So, you know, it caught everybody's imagination. It was a child of Bangalore, but adopted by India. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay, let me get uh, Karthik uh, ji right now. Uh, Karthik sir, uh, you know, what, you are from Bangalore. Do you see this kind of, because, you know, we are hearing a lot of media reports that, you know, the clients are worried. I mean, people like uh, uh, global sales head Basa Pradhan, Sudhir Chaturvedi, head of finance in North America, board member V. Balakrishnan, former consulting head Stephen, uh, Stephen Pratt. I mean, all these people have resigned. And what is interesting is they have all resigned after Mr. Narayan Murthy joined back in June last year. So it's been a year and you've had this mass exodus among top level executives. What do you think is the primary cause of this? My previous speaker has put it very eloquently. Hmm. I am not 
English is not my mother tongue. That's okay. <laughs> what I will say is Bangalore is also a place where many startups have taken place. You had the Air Deccan which closed up. You had Kingfisher which closed up. Hmm. Probably I don't wish the Infosys to go that way. Unfortunately, by the law of karma, being Bangalore is being hot, now actually <laughs> happening. So that means the whole cycle has gone wrong. So now it is being the time of Bangaloreans being Bangalore. So that's what is happening. And as the previous gentleman said, mm. it was a fantastic dream run for Infosys. Started out of a garage yeah. with two fifty dollars of investment. Taken blah, from blah, the blah. wives. But, <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, you should always see yeah. that Satya, Infosys, all of these people were on a paper tiger. They were giving their quarter of quarter reports, which was I won't say doctor, but it was for the analysts to analyze. Whereas the actual things was not there. And also at some point of time, there was this famous Indian quote of switch, that is Satyam, Vipro, Infosys, TCS, and HCL. When Satyam went down, I said, what happened? Switch became which? And now when <laughs> I'm having problems, so what is it becoming? So we are finally landing up with the itch? I don't know. So if the switch, switch. Okay. I don't know. But all the right. problem is, huh. it's all these people who are playing to the gallery, not concentrating on building second line of generation. I would yes. say Infosys did not concentrate. Infosys has a fantastic uh, uh, <coughs> development and training facility in Mysore, which right. I call it Wonderla. It hmm. is like a, a fantastic place. But the problem is, you also have to invest in youngsters. and. This is what happens when you don't invest. And most uh, uh, disappointed thing about Infosys is they say we believe in trade union, we believe in coffee cups which are uh, by two cups. Hmm. But all that is just for show. Hmm. When you don't talk to people, when you don't engage, and finally when you follow the people of your company going to our probably our culture also comes to your company. What is happening in Amalpi party yeah. is happening in Infosys. Because okay. your people are going there, so they are bringing that thing to you. All right, all so right. Overall, I would say switch to ARM is something dangerous. But all I right. think also, I think hmm. just to take on from what uh, hmm. Karthik said, hmm. now Infosys uh, becomes uh, the system becomes a witch, but now Infosys needs a witch doctor to cure all its ills. <laughs> right. In fact, in yeah, fact, Pranjal. The, 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 the company said they will not bring their family members. Now they have got the son. Exactly. So I was the, I was just uh, getting to Rohan. Doctor. I was just getting to Rohan and let me bring in, uh, you know, uh, Krishna Kumar here. Krishna Kumar, uh, you know, uh, we, a lot of media speculations are also that Rohan, who actually joined in as executive assistant uh, to uh, Narayan Murthy, seems to be taking on more powers and that has not really gone, gone down well with the senior staff. Would uh, that be one way of analyzing this exodus? Well, actually, I, I would tend to think that, uh, hmm. you know, uh, if, if Mr. Narayan Murthy as a, no, let's look at who's got the maximum, who's one individual who's got the most stake in the well-being of Infosys. Right. I think it's the founders, right? And I yeah. think if you actually look back, there's been a protocol that seems to have been agreed upon, either written or unwritten, that all the founders will have a go at being the CEO, starting with Mr. Narayan Murthy, then it was Nandan's turn, and so on it went. Now. Can they you just still the, down the camera a little bit, um, uh, Krishna sir? Can just still down the camera, just a little. Yeah, yeah. better, better, better. Yeah, please go on. Okay. Yeah, please okay. go on. So I think people have realized hmm. the, Infosys, the Infosys leadership took that as a protocol, stood by their word, did what they had committed themselves to do. If you look at financial results, it's not a paper tiger, and I would tend to think that it's very unfair to compare an Infosys which has got the highest levels of corporate governance with Satyam. The two are very different animals. Satyam also was good, hmm. but they made some mistakes and they paid for it. And, you know, uh, to be fair, I think the Indian system has been uh, pretty efficient in punishing Satyam the way it has, yeah. right? Um, Ramlinga Raju has been behind bars for quite some time, hmm. uh, right? And I think uh, there are enough checks and balances if there was a, a kind of similar allegations of, if there are similar, uh, you know, um, misappropriations in Infosys, I'm sure that uh, the law would have gotten to them. But the fact that they haven't means that they are still... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't mention about the misappropriation. I said they had ethos that the hmm. people from their family will not join. So that they broke that ethos. I didn't say that there is no uh, financial irregularities. I am not saying that. 
Hmm. So, no, so, but so I think that the, the, I'll, I'll come to the I'll come to the family part of it. Hmm. Uh, but then the commenting on putting Satyam and Infosys in the same bucket probably is not a fair comparison at this point in time, right? A, B, it, right with the leadership model of having all the founders succeed as the CEOs, but to their credit. In fact, to Mr. Narayan Murthy, to the credit of the board, in fact, to all the people, in fact, even to the current CEO who's probably, you know, who's been the first person to say that, look, this model is not working. So the, the board has brought on Mr. Narayan Murthy yeah. to say that, you know, when, when Mr. Narayan Murthy was a CEO, hands on, things work. So therefore, they've been bold enough to bring Mr. Narayan Murthy back. But can I ask now, you something? Can I, can I just interrupt you for a second there? See, uh, Pranjal, uh, you know, this is for you too, and I mean, for all of you. Um, Narayan Murthy created billionaires and millionaires when they were in their 40s he gave them ESOPs now when somebody when an executive is owning two villas is uh, holidaying abroad at a very young age then doesn't that somehow reflect negatively on the company in fact you know uh, uh, of course uh, Mr. Karthik has <laughs> been spelling doom for Infosys I wouldn't go that far but perhaps there has been a lack of motivation when it comes to no, uh, no, no. I don't I don't think so it's not huh? about lack of motivation huh? Nilanjana see huh? the thing is there there actually let me draw a parallel between Infosys and the Congress party right <laughs> First is, the, you, you decide to step down, you want to take that halo saying that, you know, and I think until he stepped down, he did a great job. Mr. Murthy did a great job of running yeah. the company, scaling it up. And there was a huge talent pool which kept taking over, right? Mm. But after that, when it didn't work, mm. why didn't it work? Was it a fault of the markets? Was it the fault of the strategy? The existing leadership of the company should have continued to find out the solutions. Exactly. If you come back from retirement, it's like saying it's my personal property. I'm going to run that, which sent a terrible signal to the market, to the clients, as well as to the people saying that this is a one man company. Right. You know, until then, Infosys had proved that it was not a one man company. It had created a team of leaders which is exactly the problem with Congress. So that happened, he comes back, then he says, okay, but I'm not going to run, my son is going to take charge. Similar to the Congress party where Sonia Gandhi says, I'm not going to run the power, run for power, but my son is going to do everything. But whether and then the equipped, son, huh? A, whether he's capable of doing it, right. B, is the rest of the leadership ready to accept the leadership of a young person who's just come over? The problem is that Mr. Murthy seems to be running the company like a privately owned company. Hmm. It's no longer a privately owned company. It's a it's a company which is listed on the markets. The stakeholders are far more than just the founders. Remember, in the case of Ford, in the case of Apple, even the founder was removed from the board. But I think fearing that the company is doing, not doing well, he has come back into the driver's seat and is planting his son over there, which I think may be very detrimental for the company. All right. Uh, would you like to respond, Mr. Karthik? I'd like to respond to that okay. here. Mr. Krishna, uh, okay. This, this lightning, see, if you remember, the current CEO is also one of the co-founders. So therefore, effectively what's happening is that Mr. Narayan Murthy is coming back as a draw submission that their model has not worked so far. And I think that's a sign of professionalism, that if you have failed, you admit to the failure, bring someone who has who can put things back on track. Doesn't matter if he was the first one of the co-founders or someone else. Right? And you they're know, saying that even Mr. Mm -hmm. Narayan Murthy's coming back is not a permanent thing. They're very clear that he's here only to the extent of putting things back on the rails. But, but look at the fact that, that 50... But, you know, if I, could, come back as if I could just add fact, to your point... To bring in an external person. And the search seems to have more or less narrowed. So therefore, 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 it's important for us to understand that much more than ever, Infosys is... Is, is, is demonstrating his professionalism much more than ever. But if that is so, I, then why are the top 15 of the leaders of Infosys quitting? If, if professionalism is there, why is it that it's happening now? I think the fact is that these people are leaving because there is no professionalism and they find that there is an extra constitutional authority of sorts in the, in the form of his son who is actually calling the shots without having the endorsement of the board and all the stakeholders. So I think these, these senior professionals are leaving not because it's becoming professional, but because it is not so. I mean, look at what Mr. Mohandas Pai says. He says that uh, Mr. Murthy should have continued to uh, be where he was. Let the board decide. Any good organization has to be board-led. 
whether in public sector or private sector, once you're listed. Absolutely. So why isn't the board deciding? Why is he deciding? I think that is the key question has, for me. Uh, Mr. Krishna, don't you no, think but, it but, has gone but, out as a but, negative but, message but, in the market? But, but, but who said that the board has not decided? If, if, if Mr. Murthy is back, it's been the board's decision to bring him back. You cannot bring in uh, Mr. Murthy back without the board's uh, explicit uh, approval, if not uh, recommendation. And if Mr. Murthy has brought his son in as an executive assistant, it is as an executive assistant. And if the other members who have quit are saying that his son is an extra constitutional authority, it's not out in the public. It's speculation, at least at this point in time. Yes. There's been no hint of that. Right? But the fact no is that 15 this. people have left who are senior management. Now, what explains that in your view? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Good question. Good question. So let me let me let me give draw a parallel with Wipro. Now, Wipro is unabashedly quite privately held by Mr. Premji and his, uh, you know, family. Seventy-five percent. Right, mm -hmm. and therefore, Mr. Premji, no one questions what Mr. Premji does because he's a he's a he's got a very big majority in the company uh, as far as the uh, stake goes. Uh, now he's replaced CEOs. He's replaced CEOs twice over, right? And along with them, there has also been an exodus of similarly senior people, right? He promoted people from within, didn't work out. Right? He brought someone from outside. That He first brought someone from outside. Didn't work. He, I mean, it worked for some time. They did their jobs. Uh, they had a role to play. They finished playing out their role. Mr. Premji felt that he had to bring in a different kind of set of persons to run the company. He did that. They did their jobs. And then he, he, realized, he, he thought as a shareholder that he should bring in another set of, you know, another set of uh, leaders out there. And then he's done that now. Now, if Mr. Premji has done that and that's happened in Wipro, why not in Infosys? Quite but that's possible. Okay. Why, is, why is Infosys being yes. criticized now, and Wipro not being criticized? Have, have, have had their time under the sun mm. and probably it's time for a new type of or a new set of leadership to come in. Okay, because let me get uh, Mr. Started. Krishna, let me get Mr. Mr. Karthik. Let me get Mr. Karthik. A new, new set of people allowed to be come in. Whoever is there, it looks like an IPR team. Right, which is uh, like unfortunately like the Bangalore team, which did not qualify for the final. Uh, so, and also, Mr. Karthik, there was not even a single, single Bangalorean player into the food for thought. Team. So that was the unfortunate part. Mr. So Karthik, food for thought. This team suddenly has got this fantastic wanderla of training, and nobody from the their own Do about 1,200 people train are eligible for this top post. Do you and think? Then finally, there is this extra constitutional authority. Who is playing around? Okay, so what does it Mr. Mean? Karthik, can I? I am interjecting with one question. I will say, I will say, where is this concept of extra constitutional authority coming from? I mean, who said that? Okay, can I can I just interject with one question? Food for thought here. Do you think this is a planned strategy to bring in the younger people to the top? Do you do you think this could also be like? It could be, but why yeah. start with the sun? I mean, what, what is difference between <laughs> what is what is difference between a privately held company and a publicly listed company? I you, would you think you spoke of the sun. There's a very interesting thing that happened on social media. There was Mr. B. G. Srinivas who was touted to be the CEO, and he also quit. And then the round, the joke that was doing the rounds on social media was that again, like the Congress, it is having uh, you know a, a, a leadership crisis. Who is facing the bigger leadership crisis? Is it the Congress or is it the Infosys? So this uh, thing that you brought up about the sun. It has I been mean, doing the rounds. I just I, want to I, I know. Mean, yeah. Just a moment. See, yeah. I would tend to think that yeah. it's one one thing to have such speculation in the social media, which is on the lighter side. Yeah. But it's another thing to say that on a more serious note, if we are if we are talking business, then it's it's important to understand that if Mr. Rohan Murthy has come on to the board, I mean, mm. has come into the uh, offices of Infosys. Uh, which has not ever happened so far with any of the other founders. If en masse the founders had brought in their offspring, right, hmm. uh, in the you know offices of Infosys, then we could have talked about you know uh, the values going astray. But Mr. Murthy has consciously made it public. It was not a backdoor entry. He's made it public. He's taken the board on along with him. The board has endorsed it, and then Mr. Rohan Murthy has come on board. So therefore, it's important to trust. And any corporate's board. If you do not have that trust in the corporate's board, then you're questioning the very structure of uh, the governance that we have in India, right? Okay. So therefore, you've got to I either know, figure out. You've got to say that the entire other, government other yeah. can also bring their children. What stops them? Sorry. It's just the 
other 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 board members can also bring their children, and that is the beginning but of the race to the water. But they are not. Yeah. But they are not. And that's how, how are you sure? How are you sure? How are you sure? No, is it? Sure? Because see, today it has happened. The president has said so. How are you? It, it all normally I, happens I, in any private company. I I I I, I, I mean, it's like it's like saying that it's unsafe to even walk on the roads just because a few people got hit when they crossed the road. You can't you you can't be making. Okay, okay, Mr. Krishna, can I just pose one question to you? Uh, Mr. Karthik and Mr. Krishna, let's let's okay. The the, the Rohan factor, of course, is being debated. I I, I don't think I don't I, think it's fair to debate the Rohan factor at all. All right, all right. So which is why I'm changing track. Which is why I'm changing mind, track. To Mr. my mind, it's a non-issue. All right. Because. I think I think if the CEO has done that with the consent, whether he brings his close friend or I think he has to be given a free hand. Okay, to run okay. Let me let me change it. let me change this uh, the track a little bit. You know the the the, ma the mass exodus of so many people at the top level, all obviously will cause concerns in clients. Now attrition is something very common. A 10% to 12% attrition rate is common in every industry, also in software companies. But at this level and attrition. Attrition at this level is it normal? And clients are worried. So See, it's not about attrition alone. Let me uh, let me add to the points, and I, uh, the experts that we have here uh, can probably uh, contribute. The mm. fact is that Infosys has lost its halo. Yeah. Second point is that companies like Cognizant, uh, companies uh, like uh, iGate uh, have actually uh, seen as more exciting, more innovative, more futuristic organizations who are going up the value chain, they're delivering better uh, services to the clients. Uh, Infosys has always also been mired in some problems on visa issues in the US. So the fact is that Infosys seems to be looking a bit lost right now, whether on the business side, whether on the leadership side, whether on its own growth path. You know, the answers can be complex. I agree that maybe it's not just about the sun, but mm -hmm. it's a symbol. It's a symbol that something is wrong. The fact that Mr. K. V. Kamath was appointed as a chairman for a short while and then again removed, there has been, after a long run of stability, Infosys right. has gone into instability on several fronts and that is worrying everybody. It no longer enjoys the respect that it used to. Okay. The question is why? Okay, and, and my, my next question to you is, this is definitely not market driven, the exodus that we are seeing, but how will the market react to this? Well, the market um, has reacted if you look at it, Nilanjana. In its market analysts are no longer seeing Infosys as the bellwether stock if you're mm. only talking about stock markets anymore. Mm. You know, that's mm. what I just said, that mm. Infosys is no longer seen what is... Infosys decided the reaction or the action or the direction of the <coughs> markets. Infosys decided what was going to be happening in the technology sector. It's no longer the case. There are new kids on the block who are doing better. TCS. TCS is posted, rock solid. Yes, absolutely. It has been there longer than, uh, than uh, Infosys. It is now seen as the real gem in the IT sector because it is professionally managed, it is listed, there is no issues of leadership, there are no issues of succession, there is no question of somebody's son or daughter coming in. And TCS does not create millionaires overnight. Even so, so it's a question of stability and right. they know which way they're heading and they have been posting higher profits consistently for last so many quarters. Infosys has not, if you now compare Infosys with TCS, let's see where it comes up at. TCS is clearly, you know, streets ahead. Okay, can uh, can I just ask you uh, uh, one more thing now? You know, Mr. Narayan Murthy, he he had retired, and then after two years, he came back, and that was when Infosys was battling issues of lower margins, lower revenues. However, these exits that have happened in the past 11 months or so, they have happened, Pranjal, despite a turnaround in Infosys's fortunes. The company's growth rate has doubled to 11.5%. It has won 238 clients in the last year. The stock price has gone up, gone up over 20%. So, what is the reason, real reason for the troubles that Infosys is facing? It no, cannot before, be growth. Yeah, but let me just quickly uh, ask you, let uh, the experts yeah, answer that. Please. My question is, if Mr. Murthy has to retire, I mean, how long will he remain in the company? If he is the only person responsible for growth, right. how long? I mean, there's a finite number of years he can continue to do that. Hmm. So if you are creating an institution, can hmm. the institution outlive the founder? That is the problem which Infosys is facing. So it has not created second rung leaders. Is that what you're saying, Pranjan? Well, where is the second rung? Seems to have left. The third rung has also <laughs> left. Right, right. Okay. Mr. Karthik, please respond to that. 
See, yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Hmm. Problem is, Infosys was a fantastic place where they had thought of leadership even before other corporates put in place. So everything was going well. But somewhere down the line, they were not made of that metal which could uh, take on any kind of weather. And unfortunately for Infosys right now, it's being hit by uh, global recessions uh, regularly. Right. There have been problems, there have been problems of visa regulations, there have been all kind of problems. And when there is problems, that's when they get <coughs> leadership who can take them through. Unfortunately, Infosys second and third round leadership are not there. And the meddling from outside elements is also causing the problem. And I only wish Infosys continues to do what it does in the it has done in the past, make more millionaires. I'm not against it. But only thing is let there be a word of caution. Let them also listen to people and see how, when there is challenges, how to overcome that. Right. Just because they were the leaders, somewhere not listening to people has affected them. All right. Mr. Krishna Kumar, uh, I would like to get your comments on that. Uh, the, the, there is no second rung leaders probably no third rung leaders as well. So Mr. Murthy had to come back to put things back on track. How long will that continue? Your comments, sir. Yeah, quickly, my comments to sum up is that, yes, Infosys is in trouble, it's in turbulence, Yes. right? And uh, corporates, when they have to transform and move on to the next level, will have to let go of their past, which includes the past leadership that has probably worked in the past, but may not work in the future. So therefore, I think this is a phase where they're going through the process of finding their new leadership, letting go of the past. So therefore, it's times of turbulence. I agree with it. Mm. Uh, it's not business as usual at Infosys. But still, my, my view would be that uh, I think they're they are changing for the better. I mean, it doesn't look so glossy right now. They've lost their gloss. But that's the phase all organizations go through. Apple went through it. IBM went through it before Lou Gerstner came on board. Um, you know, rank outsider, right? Uh, G went through it before Jack Welch and then came through. And then after Jeff, Jeff Immelt, you don't hear so much about uh, G as much as you used to hear when Jack Welch was, Welch was around. So therefore, organizations go through these phases and we just have to see, wait and see how it all shapes up. One hopes for the best, of course. Okay, so you are giving it a, you know, you, you want them to take some more time and, you know, through, you know, wade their way through this turbulence. But then you just talked of, you know, this uh, letting go of uh, the old people and, you know, bringing in new leaders. So bringing in new leaders, again, under the leadership of the founder. Not, the person at the top has to be Mr. Narayan Murthy, right? I mean, that's how it seems to be going now. Well, it would seem that... Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, Steve Jobs came back. Right? <laughs> All right. And, uh, so after Narayan Murthy, right? who so is the new that. CEO? So that's a good point. You know, it, you know, the point is that it, it also proved that Steve Jobs, uh, that Apple is a one-man company, that post Steve Jobs, there's nothing exciting happening. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away. But uh, is it also going to be in Infosys that uh, only one man can uh, uh, run Infosys? That's Mr. Narayan Murthy. Or is it that uh, even if you remove the Narayan, is it going to be at least one Murthy who's uh, going to be tied to the fate of Infosys? I think that's going to be a real uh, thing <laughs> to right. watch out for. All right. Well, time will tell. Time Let's will see. tell. Uh, one hopes not. Uh, one hopes that they're able to find a sustainable leadership, uh, uh, you know, discovery process and renewal processes. I think that the key thing is that every organization need, need, has its own DNA and they need to find their own process of renewal. So right now, I, I, my guess is that uh, right. the Infosys is going through a process of renewal and hopefully they will, you know, be able to zero in on a process that will hold them and sustain them for good time to come. Mr. Krishna Kumar, as optimistic as ever about Infosys, despite the fact that, yes, he admits that, yes, there is turbulence, there are, there are problems. Final comments uh, from uh, Mr. Karthik. I already started my uh, opening remarks with switch. I don't <laughs> want the end to be with which or anything. I wish Infosys all the best. They have on a race to the bottom. I only hope the leadership realizes that, starts talking to people and bring in some of the values that they started with and stem this race to the bottom. Krishna Kumar being optimistic and Mr. Karthik spelling doom for Infosys. All right, those are two ends of the spectrum, really, that uh, you know one can actually have about Infosys. Pranjal, your final comment. I think what he said uh, sounded <laughs> like a description of Congress as well. Talk to the people, do a ground-up <laughs> approach, be connected to the masses, right. and listen. The leadership should listen to what the market is saying. So I hope uh, those are resolved. My simple question is, Infosys as an institution should outlive the founders 
and their progeny. If that happens, I think it's in a good shape. If it's stuck to that, then perhaps the beginning of the end is what we are seeing. All right. Those are very cautious words there uh, from Pranjal. The beginning of the end is what we're seeing. Are you putting a little question mark there after after your sentence? I said perhaps. Perhaps. All right. So the conversation continues on IndiaPostLive.com through your comments, your audio and video comments, and of course your posts. You can also tweet us, hashtag IndiaPostLive at the rate IndiaPostLive. Thank you so much. I would like to thank my online guest, Mr. Karthik, Mr. Krishna Kumar, for joining us. I think we had a very intellectually stimulating conversation and I hope this conversation is watched by members of the board of Infosys and then they can take a stock of what's going on and probably figure out the best way to move forward. Thank you so much for watching. Pranjul, thank you so much for joining thank the you. conversation. Bye-bye.